Okay, so we're going to work on this painting for another half hour or so and then submit them into Canvas. So this is where I started today. And I am just cleaning it up. You know, finding the areas that, especially when I zoom in at 100% or close to it, I notice don't feel as finished as other areas. And that's largely going to be the things I haven't gotten around to on refined painting yet. So I'm painting with only a 34% brush. You know, refined painting to me is anything with 50% or less. Because you're making small incremental changes. Doesn't mean you can't be bold and deliberate. But everything then kind of blends with what's underneath it to give you a stronger finish and more satisfying texture at the end. Holding down option, steel colors. Remember, you're not a slave to your photo reference. You can always change gears from it, but it can reveal a lot to play with. And I can steal colors still if I need to. Because as you blend, everything starts to average together. So sometimes you need to reass reassert highlights, reassert shadows. And color. It's always good to play with color. That's at least my painting philosophy. Now to really match reality, you would match all of the hard edges, all of the soft edges. And that takes a lot of patience and time and careful observation. By using this one brush for almost everything, it's going to make everything a little bit softer than it is in reality, but it also becomes part of your brush technique. And so to, to sharpen edges, I can just kind of cut into it with the brush. Paint on the outsides of the shapes I want. And sometimes I'll even go to layers behind and paint behind it as well, almost like you're painting on glass. Just depends on what's needed. I still do a lot of squinting. See how the corner of her mouth here is darker than the skin around it. How the shadow under her lower lip is stronger than I have it. Squinting can help you see all of that. And then I'm always moving my brush in the direction of the skin. And playing with complement colors like greens and oranges, blues, blues and oranges, yellows and purples, kind of layer them on top of each other to get more complexity. And in this way, digital painting is just so much more nuanced and subtle than digital coloring, right? Where you're just playing with usually duotones and just tonal variations on flat local color. I can do kind of these soft 30% washes of color. And I think the hardest thing in digital painting is when you're nearing the end to try to keep that same energy and attack that you had when you were first sketching it out. And 
not to tighten up too much. I know it's a challenge for me. And the extent to which you like blending and you like playing with this is really the extent to which digital painting is a technique that kind of suits your, your interests. Because it's a very hands-on, very direct, kind of labor-intensive technique in digital art. Because you're just asked to touch and refine everything as you go. So that's what makes each digital painting technique very unique. Okay, now getting to the ears. Barely there. You can see how unfinished some things look compared to other things. So I might need to up my opacity closer to 50 to be able to tackle these. You just don't want them to take away from all the work you've done in the areas you're more sure of. So you need to kind of finish them off. Even if they're in soft focus. Even if we don't have a whole lot of reference to go on, I just can kind of squint and see where the highlights are. Get some of those color variations from the rest of my, my work. And blend the shadows. other year. I'm just using spacebar to move around. I can also use navigator. It's a little bit easier on my full painting. It can also show me where I can get more aggressive with my shading.
Now, for sheer painting technique, one of my favorites is John Singer Sargent, who is just a master kind of commercial painter of portraits who just never wasted a stroke. And that's a high bar to try to achieve. But instead of trying to be really tight and nitpicky, you just try to do things with single confident strokes that are the right color, the right weight, that kind of pick up and attack in the right way. And then that saves you a lot of cleanup after. So don't be afraid of the paint strokes looking like paint strokes. Just make sure they're in the right place doing the right things. That's the trick. And then some of you are just going to find, well, painting, digital painting is not your thing. It's too fussy but it can be a helpful addition to any other digital tools you have. It's a way to finish everything off for sure. Have full control. Okay. So I've still got some bold paint going on, especially in the forehead. Not everything has been washed out. And that's where some of these stylistic influences can come into play. allowing you to be a little bit more experimental. So with the parts that aren't so necessary, I might play a little bit now as I finish this off. I'm going to save my work. I've got the painting on the face where I want it. It's layered up in many ways. So if I take it from kind of the painting I just did today, with the painting underneath it, with the painting underneath that, I don't really even need the base painting anymore for it to look like who I want it to look like. And that's a good place to be. So when you add that base painting in, that allows you to have a lot more flexibility. So what I'm going to do now is duplicate my base painting, which rasterizes it or unlocks it for me. I'm going to erase the palette. Then I can erase that from other things as well. Start unlocking your paint layers so that you can clean them up. And what I do is take the uh, the copy of my base painting and now I'm actually going to go to image adjustment and I'm going to go to hue saturation and because I stole so many of my colors from my base painting it can be fun to play with the hue of your base painting you know to shift it a little bit one way or the other so I'm going to do plus five there I can also lighten it or darken it I think I might darken mine slightly you can also saturate it or desaturate it depending on what's needed. And that's all going on kind of behind the scenes. So what's the difference between this and this? Just subtle changes. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. Digital art gives you the ability to, to play with all these things. Then I'm gonna take my lasso and I'm going to start cutting the shapes I want from these different layers. There we go. And I'm going to finish up.